نحمد ہوا نسلی اللہ رسول ہل کریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری واحل العقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی وجعل لی وزیر من آخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ Our second session of uh, a brief introduction of the Arabic grammar, we will be talking about verbs today. Verbs in Arabic tend to differ from the verbs in English and other languages. In English, as we have, there is a past tense giving the meaning of all what happened in the past. And then there is the present tense or what is happening in in today's life and then there is the future tense explaining what will happen in the future so we just have three tenses very different from that in arabic we have a perfect tense which is the past tense and then we have an imperfect verb the perfect verbs are for the past tense and then we have the imperfect verbs which are also known as the muzare in arabic and they have the meaning and they carry the meaning for the present as well as for the future so the imperfect verbs in the arabic called the muzare they carry the meaning of the present as well as the future And then the third kind of verbs are the imperative verbs. Out of these, we have two categories. The commanding verbs is the fail amr. The commanding verbs, these are the verbs which give a command, an order, a do, or even the request. Like when we make a supplication or dua, it is an imperative verb. And then the second uh, the category of the imperative verbs are the prohibiting verbs, the nahi, which stop, which, uh, which say a don't and which prohibit. And these are the second type of imperative verbs. So now today I will be explaining in brief about the perfect verbs which give the meaning and carry the meaning of the past tense that is the action or the activity was done in the past i will not be talking about all the persons but the basic verbs which are generally mentioned in the quran and we're going to come across in the verses of quran that is what i'm going to talk about so that you get familiar with the verbs and there will be a basic die cast of the words and putting in any root word in that we will be able to make the words or seeing any root word in this form we will be able to understand that this verb this uh, this verb signifies an action in the past fa'ala fa'ala means to do something fail means activity and to do something so fa'ala fa zabr fa ain zabr lam zabr la fa'ala means what he did who is this he is a third person singular masculine so when i'm talking about my brother and i say that he did this i will say fa'ala but when i have to talk about two people doing a thing in the past i will say fa'ala in addition of alif after the lam alif la so fa'ala will mean they did and they here will mean what the third person masculine for two for two people then the third word we would need to know and we will very frequently come across in the quran is fa'alu when in the end of a verb there is waw alif this waw and alif indicates that the work or the job or the verb which is being explained has been done by more than two people that is by a plural so fa'alu means they did and this they means what it is the third person plural masculine when i have four or five brothers and i say i have to explain that they did something i will i will say what 
fa'alu. For one, I will say fa'ala. For two, we say fa'ala. And for three, we say fa'alu. Now the next word is fa'alta. Ta zabur ta will signify what? The second person masculine singular. When my brother is like standing in front of me and I'm talking to him and I'm addressing my brother and I'm telling my brother that now the third word we need to relate and we will very frequently come across in Quran and the Quranic verses is fa'alta. Now here the ta is uh, uh, in, uh, is pointing towards the second person masculine singular you did for example like my brother is standing in front of me and i am addressing him and i'm telling him that you did this then i'll say fa'alta the next word is fa'altum this again means you we will translate it as you did but it will mean what that you plural did Fa'alta means you one person did. Fa'altuma will mean that you two people did it. And fa'altum will mean what? That you two, uh, that you two, um, two, uh, second person masculine plural is done that. So when like four of my brothers standing in front of me and I tell them that you all four of you, you have done it, I will say fa'altum. Okay? Now fa'alti. Tazirti is going to signify the second person feminine singular. That you one feminine, you one girl or you one woman, you have done that. We will say she did. And this she will mean what? That this is the second person and she is singular. Fa'alti. Uh, like ta zabarta, the men, according to the teachings of Quran, ar-rajalu qawwamuna ala nisa they have a superiority. So for the masculine, there is zabar. There is uh, the point is above the ta, and here it is below the ta. So this is, I think, how you will be able to remember it. Fa'altu, tapishtu is what I. The first person singular for altu, I did. And when it is fa'alna, noon alifna is for we, the first person plural. So these are the words which you will very frequently come across in Quran. Fa'ala, that he did it. Fa'ala, they too did it. Fa'alu, they plural did it. Fa'alta, you, one masculine did it fa'altum you many of you you did it fa'alti you one female did it fa'altu i did this fa'alna we did this okay so these are the few die casts for the perfect of the past tense now here is a list of the few alphabets when they come in Quran what are their meanings alif sabar a generally means what why bazir b as we join bazir b in bismillah so this bazir b means in by or with now ta sabar ta is for swearing or for an oath wow sabar wa has two meanings one is and and the second it is used for swearing or oath like wal asr wal fajr was zariyat so it is for swearing or oath fazabur fa means so thus hence or then seen zabur fa when it comes before a word and is attached to the word it indicates that this verb was or this activity was done in near will be done in near future sayaqulu soon will people say soon will they say so when there is seen zabar sa before a word it means that this imperfect verb will be done in near future lamzer li when it is attached to a word it means for like we say lillahi for allah 
ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب او يس ناو ريمايندينج يو ذا هوم ورك اند ذا براكتس فور توداي از ذات فروم لايك تو تو ثري ستانزاز اوف ذا قران يو ار جوينج تو لوك فور ذا فيربس اند يو جوينج تو ايدينتيفاي فعل فعل فعلو and fa'alta fa'alti fa'altum like you will see uh, many words like uh, re- resembling in the similar diecast and try to identify a few of the past tenses in the quran